Everybody, welcome to another episode of the Ganas Network podcast. This is Omero Guerrero here. This is Pablo in the house, and it is Monday, November sixteenth. Wow, already midway through November, huh? Yeah, man. It looks like uh, I'm already hearing Christmas music on the radio. Forty-five days away, and uh, you got three check, three paychecks to get your shit together so you can get <laughs> presents for all your kids and your family. That's it. Get it together. So if you didn't start shopping earlier in the year, you better. It don't work. Yeah. I I always do last minute shopping, dude. I'm such a procrastinator. I'm bad at that. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes I don't know what to get my wife or even my nephews or my parents because it's like, I feel like they already have everything they need. You know, why do I got to give them more crap? <laughs> I, I always learn from um, from my my BFF, Vincent Din, uh, when we were roommates, he would we all, we were both last minute shoppers, but my dumbass would go and spend like all day going to two different malls, and Vincent from his freaking iPad on Amazon.com. Boop 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 boop. Two day shipping. Yeah, please. I love that Amazon Prime and get good deals online. But anyway, guys, we have a pretty really important talk topic today. Yeah, we do, man. It's a crazy weekend. Uh, that's things are happening all over the world. You know that we want to kind of touch base on. Yeah, recently, guys, um, if you didn't hear from Facebook News or all of the, the the new picture updates with the France flag, the red, white, and blue, or the blue, white, and red pictures, it's not a 4th of July thing. Uh, there was just a huge massacre, huge shooting uh, in France last Friday or Thursday. Yeah, Thursday, man. Thursday night, Friday. And, you know, hundreds of people uh, were killed. And it, it's such a crazy story to think that there are these wild people that can attend a public function or just start shooting away, you know, but the reality is, is that this type of, uh, these types of, of killings have been happening for decades all over the world. And I just think, uh, you know, France is obviously a very popular destination. It's a big city. Um, you know, they've hosted the Olympics and fr France, I think is, is the, the city of love. No, the city of romance. France. Yeah. Um, so it, it's just scary. You know, I, I saw a story on Facebook that there was a local girl from Long Beach, Latina, that was killed. She was there studying abroad. Sad, man. And, you know, but on Friday, everybody on Facebook changed their pictures to uh, the France flag. And that's cool if you want to support that way. But, you know, the, the truth of the matter is, guys, is, you know, there's one thing bringing awareness. But if, if you're just going to only post your picture and not do anything else about it. You know, what are you really doing? You know, maybe you can go to the Red Cross and donate some money. Maybe you can go to your local, you know. Look for a way to give yeah. money, time, something. Uh, you know, it's unfortunate what happened to these people. But I thought it was kind of, I thought it was cute, you know, that everybody was changing their their um, their Facebook image over to the uh, red, white, and blue for France. But uh, at the end of the day, I think, uh, you know, that does absolutely nothing for them. You know, I think, you know, prayer is probably better than just changing that. I think you're just following trends on Facebook. And that's just me being real. I think you're following trends because everybody's doing it. And uh, but really that you're not really supporting anything with that, you know. So try to get involved in some other way other than just changing your profile pic. Right, right. And I know, Pablo, you um, just happened to have an event already scheduled in advance where your company sponsored uh, the, the VA event. Uh, was it in L.A.? It was in Los Last Angeles. Last Saturday, and you were sharing a little about that this morning. We were having breakfast. Could you kind of share a little bit more about that? Yeah. That was pretty cool. Yeah, man. We Our company sponsored an event. It's a VA. Uh, you know, it's a veterans uh, uh, event where we're able to educate the veterans who have been in the military and have not been able to take advantage of VA loans or any of their benefits. Um, and it was actually... You know, it was kind of it was cool to participate in an event like that because you feel like, you know, we should be giving more to these people because these guys risk their lives. I mean, you know, we got a chance to talk to some of them and it's it's sad. Some of them have come back with like some mental illnesses, physical illnesses, 
you know, it's just, it's a, it's a bad thing. And, but uh, you know, worse than anything is that they don't get any education on any of the benefits that they get. They don't get any real support once they do land here, you know, once they come back and they're out, they're kind of just on their own. There, there's no, there's nothing in play. I mean, we always put money in and here's what I, here's what I realized, especially with what happened in France, you know, we're quick to jump to aid other countries big time. And we, we want to pump money because, you know, it's, I'm just going to be very real war, war helps our economy, you know, and that's just the way it is. Every time there's a war, it helps a boost our economy. So anytime there's an attack on one of our allies, we want to quickly jump the trigger and, and go and help out. But what about all the people that have already put in their efforts into helping us out for, for example, this last war we had in Iraq? Or the one we had, you know, the other Bush, uh, that 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 war itself. Uh, what was that one? The Gulf War. Yeah. I mean, what well, what do we do with with those soldiers when they come back? Really, nothing. We just hey, thanks for serving for four or eight years, and you put them on the street, and you let them try and figure it out. There should be more programs, I think, to help these people out because they give a lot, man. They really do. Yeah. And uh, I don't know, man. It was just it was cool for us to participate and help out. And really get a chance to talk to some of these people, but it gives you a, an appreciation for these these soldiers that have gone out there and fought for our freedom, so that I can be an entrepreneur, so that you can be an entrepreneur, or so that we can be you know safe and sound in our cubicles or whatever, and not worry about anybody coming in and attacking us. But when we see them on the street, what do we really um, do for them? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, we don't we don't put any effort back into these people. We it's like we stop. We stop building into them, you know, and that and that's that's not cool. So anyways, I think one of the things we can all do is, you know, not just thank your veterans, but show a way of of helping them out physically, you know, or taking them under your wing, giving them a job if you can, you know, whatever. But figure out a way to give back more to these guys because they deserve a lot more. Right. No. Yeah. And I actually have a good friend. Um, I, I won't share his information, but good friend known him since like middle school. He went to Afghanistan. And he was a gunman, dude. Like this guy was a gunner shooting people. He got shot at and uh, he was in like Humvees that exploded and he was able wow. to live through it all. And he's he's done he, with the military. He was in the Marine Corps, but he's still to this day. His his spine is completely messed up where he can't. He used to be very athletic. He played football. He was fit. And now he's overweight. Because he can't run. He can't do a lot. He can't do it much, man. Yeah. So, but, you know, he did serve our country and he's very proud. He, when everything went down in Afghanistan, he was passionate to join because he wanted to fight. And he did. And now his younger brother is also a Marine. And he's taking advantage of some of the benefits. I understand uh, he's married, so they give him extra money now for that. And they're paying for his school. He's going to college. He wants to be a lawyer. And he actually uh, works for a construction company that's owned by um, a veteran nice. and only hires veterans. That's, he, so that's it's pretty what I'm cool. talking about. Yeah, it's pretty cool. They're out of Orange County. I forget the name. Um, but he's saying that their employees are just straight vets. So that's pretty cool. And th it's very true, man, uh, to see and hear the stories of like the PTSD. I mean, for, forget the guys that even lost their limbs. That's That's insane, too. What happens when you lose your legs, right? Or your... There was a couple of amputees at this event and, you know, you see them walking and, you know, they have smiles on their face. You know, they're happy to be on, on the ground here in this country. But, you know, you when you talk to them, you hear you can hear in them that, you know, they were it feels like they were just used. You know, they were not really given any type of support when they got back other than, you know, maybe rehabilitation of some sort um but it, nothing to help them get back up on their feet try to be able to cope with you know being here in your because i have friends and i have family members that have been out there as well and when they come back it, it's not easy to adjust to civilian life because it's no longer i mean you've seen some crazy shit when you're out there man and to be to be able to think that you can just come back and just you know at the flick of a switch adjust to civilian life again when you've been when you've seen some 
of your best friends maybe get blown up. Yeah. Your brothers, you know? your, your brothers, brothers man, yeah. you guys become Yeah, you know, you see, you know, uh killings, you know, happening. I mean, whatever it is that happens out there, I, you know, I just what do we do for these people once they get back, you know? And it seems like I, again, I think I think like one of the big things in the politic world right now is like giving back to the VAs, you know, like to the actual VA hospitals so that they can service more men and women. And that's a big debate because they want to do cuts on that. Right. And it's like, why do you want to do cuts? But you want to keep putting more and more and more into like, you know, participating in other people's wars. You right. Know? Right. We can be there to support them, but we shouldn't have to go full on, you know, all full throttle on these wars that aren't ours. You know, I mean, we have enough issues here in this country as it is, dude. Yeah, it seems like the U.S. is always Captain Sabaho. You know, we want to go in and... But there's always an interest. There's always an agenda. Like, okay, why are we only helping out these countries where there's oil? Right. Why are we only helping out these countries where there's just, like, a lot of money, some some type of benefit or interest to the U.S.? And it's hardcore, man. It breaks my heart because I think the people that join the military, they're, they're doing it with the right intentions. They want to right. serve and protect. And my little cousin, man, he's 19 years old, and he's in, he's in the Marines in Japan. And is he, I know I'm sure he misses his parents, man. He was such a mama's boy that I'm sure he's probably homesick, you know? And, but you're right, man. We got to make, make some type of effort more than just posting a picture on Facebook and, you know, saying, you know, you know, our prayers are with you, friends, which is, which is fine. That's okay. I'm not saying don't support and don't feel bad about what's happening, but there's so much bad stuff and terrible things happening just in our own backyards. I know for me where I live, I'm in the city of Fullerton, but I always see a bunch of homeless people right by the on-ramps, right? And, you know, half of them are high and you could see they're on some shit. But those are all mental, like, problems, you know? And these, or they're addicted to the drugs. Addiction, I think, I, drug addiction to me, it's it's not just that because they love the drugs. It's it's a, it's a disease, you know? It's a sickness. And I see all these signs, too, of these guys that say, you know, I'm a vet, you know? And, you know, your heart wants to say, well, is that real or is it just a gimmick? But either way, I guess do what your heart says. Yeah. But, um... You know, don't worry so much about France. I mean, if you guys want to think about something more, you know, close to home, if we look at our neighbors to the south, Mexico, you know, there have been so many, there's thousands of people that get killed almost yearly. Um, I, you know, it has to do with a drug cartel people, but why aren't we posting up the Mexican flag all year round because of all these innocent people in Mexico that are getting, you know, massacred in dozens at a time, you know? And then also there was those 43 missing students I forget the name of the town, but there were college students, 43, they just went missing and they were all killed. And they say by law enforcement. Right. Where are the Mexican flags there? You know? Well, here's like here's here was a, here was something that was interesting that and you got to see this in like other news articles or you know, obviously the big news was France. And here's why. You know, the media is painting it as France is, is a the bigger deal because they're our allies, you know, they're the ones that gave us the Statue of Liberty, right? As a gift. Because um, we save their asses. Exactly. Um, but, you know, because they're our allies, you know, that's what the media is all over. But the reality is there was actually some events, and I took some notes, that happened on Friday the 13th. Not just Paris being under attack, where there was like 150 people, 180 people killed, and like 300-something injured. In Lebanon, there was suicide bombings that killed like 43 people and injured 200 people. Wow. But that wasn't on the news. Right. In Japan, there was an earthquake of 7.0, and uh, there's about 18,000 people that are dead or missing in northeastern Japan. In Baghdad, 21 people uh, were killed, and 46 uh, were killed at a funeral and a suicide bomb attack. In Mexico, there was a 4.3 earthquake. In China, there was like 100 people that were injured in mudslides. So, I mean, it just goes to show you, like, there was more than... Just what happened in Paris, but you know, again, this must be some kind of interest in France, huh? Yeah, Friday the thirteenth, and you know, nothing. And I'm not in any way nothing to take away from what happened in France. It was very no, devastating. Prayers and, to all their families. Yeah, and I'm sorry for you know all the all the people that lost somebody, for all the injured people. I'm I'm I could only imagine how, how I would feel if my little sister was there. Correct. You know, Me too. and I'm not trying to take away from it at all. It's just be aware of what's happening here, and everywhere else, you know. Uh, you know, I know right now there's a big movement with the Black Lives Matter, but right. the reality is all lives matter that's all right. around the world. And and we need to be more conscious about, you know, stuff that's happening. The only thing is, 
you know, obviously sometimes we can't help what the media post puts out because, you know, we all know the media is controlled. Yeah, it's it's all a big business. And back to what you were sharing earlier, Pablo, I listened to the Joe Rogan podcast with Eddie Bravo uh, just uh, yesterday or over the weekend. And he was saying that uh, a lot of these big VA hospitals, they're nonprofits and the government isn't even paying for them. It's donations. It's organizations that are donating money and time that are running these organizations. Like, what the fuck? How, how could our government not be funding a lot of these VA organizations? It's crazy. And I, I get it. It's a business, right? So maybe there's only so much money the government wants to give towards these VAs. So As a which charitable writer. Yeah, which is weird. Yeah, right. Which is why they don't want to educate them either. Because if everybody knew what they're uh, entitled to, maybe the money would run out quicker. But who cares? You know, like this is where our money should be going towards our vets, right. not towards, you know, going being Captain save -ho in Afghanistan or, you know, these other stupid. I mean, I'm not a political person. I don't understand the full. Maybe I should educate myself more before talking about it. But what business do we have going to all these other countries trying to completely change the way, you know, we're trying to change the way they, they their lives they think. Yeah, the way they think, the way they operate. And, you know, we're supporting their troops, giving their troops um weapons yeah to help train their troops like why and then those troops turn those rebels that we you know that we give you know they guns become, to they become turn ISIS. around they become they become our enemy somewhere down the road oh my and god and then, and it's then, a never-ending cycle man and, and then the king of the captain save -a is barack obama which you know he's our president you know respect but he's bringing now Syrian refugees to the U S and I was like, no big deal. You know, it's funny. I, I saw the story on Facebook and I was like, no problem. But this morning I was up really early today, like at six o'clock in the morning. And I saw that a girl from my hometown, garden Grove, California What's up, garden Grove. She posted a story that said, Oh no, not garden Grove. And then I, it was linked to the Syrian refugees list of all the cities that Obama is going to send all these refugees to. Garden Grove was on the list and Anaheim just for local Orange County, but also that's my backyard. Yeah. And the way it worked was, I don't remember how many people, I think it was 10 family, 10 people per city, but each person could bring nine people with them or eight people with them. Wow. So per city. That's and you, 200 people right there. That's in, in two cities. Yeah. Who knows yeah. how, how, how big that list and is. And they say that, you know, they were vetting these people. They did background checks, but really, come on. How do you background? How do you do a back? Okay, how do you do a background check on someone who has zero background? Right. Because you know they don't have any way of keeping track of people over there and what they've done in the past. You know, the only people we have intel on usually are the people who are running the show. You know. Yep. And you know, there's nobody else out there that we give a shit about. And that's just being real. It was so all of a sudden we want to take in these refugees and we want to do a thorough background check. What is your background check going to say? Right. Nothing. Yeah. Because there's no database to look at to see what these people are about. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't have a problem helping refugees from other countries. I have a problem with, you know, just saying that you're going to do a thorough background check and bring them into the country. To bring them into our city. When there is no such thing as a background check in in their country you know what i'm saying yeah man it's it's crazy it, it didn't hit me until i saw garden grove on the list because my parents still live in garden grove so you know i really hope genuinely that these people number one are refugees and are good people you know that they're they they are they only want to escape you know the terror in their country and that they only have good intentions to prosper and work hard and and add value to the community i really hope genuinely that the fa the families that do get to come over here that's their intention but i just have a feeling man that through these hundreds of syrians that are going to come there's got to be some bad people man there's always bad people even like los mexicanos or the people from south or central america that come to the u.s you know do most of the people come with good intentions to work yeah but do some terrible criminals you know also come through? through yes but but that goes without saying because you know even here in the united states there's the bad apples. I mean, oh yeah, oh, and, and and I'm just gonna go into, uh, and I'm gonna just kind of just go into like the terrorism that happened here. You know, not too long ago there was a theater shooting. You know, where a bunch of people were killed, filmed by a person who was Anglo. It was uh, the other gentleman who went into the church and killed all those black people, and that kid was, you know, 
showing his colors uh, or whatever. Um, obviously, like I said, there's a, a bunch of things that are happening here in our own backyard, and we're and I think we fail to neglect the problems happening in our own backyard because we're sticking our as a country we're sticking our nose in other people's business that really we sh- shouldn't belong. You know, what I mean, I don't think we should be. I, we shouldn't be so quick to jump the gun in other people's problems. Captain Save a Ho, Obama. Yeah. yeah, but I mean, it's not just it, Obama. It happened before Obama. No, but yeah, you're right. There's dozens of people, hundreds of people who are influential in making these decisions. You know, and um, you know, just like I am quick to point him out as the bad guy, the Captain Save a Ho. You know, there's more people, and I get that. But as a president, I think he has the he makes he can make an executive decision to veto something too. You know, like I think the whole problem, and I mean the problem just started with you know um, the previous president. Also, nobody ever talks about him, you know. But let's just be honest, we went into Iraq uh, when they had absolutely nothing to do with the terror attacks, but somehow it was painted that they were the ones yeah. that had something to do with it. But really, what we were after was the oil. And then we said, if we're going to war with Iraq and we're going to war with Afghanistan and, you know, Osama bin Laden and, you know, and, and that's what triggered ISIS. To, to be honest, ISIS came from that problem. We went and dismantled a country that had dictatorship, took that leadership away, and then we attempted to implement some type of democracy in that country. It failed miserably. And now you've got all these militias and rebels, you know, and and, and 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 organizations that are forming that are anti-US. Yep. And right. it all stemmed from us putting, you know, making a country, forcing a country into a, a war when they had absolutely nothing to do with the attacks. But yeah. I mean, everybody's opinion is different on that, yeah. right? It's just crazy, man. And and this isn't a political podcast. We're not trying to make it, you know, political or try to sway people in any way. But we're just saying bring awareness to your community and, you know, um, don't just post your picture on Facebook, but actually do something. You know, even if it's donate, you know, five bucks to the Red Cross, I believe that's more beneficial than posting your face. What the fuck does your Facebook page picture matter? You only have 20 followers. It don't do shit. No one gives a F about your picture. That's why I didn't change my, my I profile. I didn't touch mine either, man. I was like, why am I, what is this going to do for those yeah. poor people? You know, like right. those people, are, they're suffering right now, man. They are because, I mean, n- nobody's ever really done anything like this in, to France ever, yeah. you know, since who knows when. Yeah. So, I mean, I know that they're going, they have fear. It's like they're 9 11. You know what I'm saying? Like, they're yeah, in a position right. of like, whoa, what just happened on our land and our soil? But again, n- not, not to say that we shouldn't be helping them, but we shouldn't be so quick to jump the gun and say, hey, if they're going to war, we're going to war. Because in 9 11, they weren't so quick to send troops out there. Even though they did send troops, they weren't so quick to just say, let's go get them. Right. Because it, that's just not the way they they work, and you know I don't think we should be jumping the gun either. This is a very unfortunate thing that happened. Prayers to all their families and all the people who, you know, maybe that lost their lives or were injured. And uh, you know, I pray for for that country. You know, and if I can send any kind of money in that way, I would rather do that. But I'm not going to change my profile pic because it does absolutely nothing right. for them. So do your part, small or as big as it is, guys. Do something more than just posting your picture. Here we are, you know, we're here talking about it. You know, I think us talking about it is going to do more than just posting a picture. And um, whether you like to agree with us or not, and by no means are we experts in military, right. by no means are we experts in politics. This is just two average Hispanics here in, in, in the United States that are observing something and we're speaking that you know, up uh, about it, you know, because most of us probably won't. We'll just change our profile and think that's important enough. But I'd rather bring up a controversial topic, whether you agree with me or not, is irrelevant. I'm not 100% educated on it, but I do know what I see, you know. I'm going to change my my picture to the France thing, and then I'm going to go pop some bottles at the club because that'll make me feel better. Oh, yeah, because I'm balling out of control that way. (laughs) So anyways, guys, we, we sorry that we would start. Usually, you know, the lunes con ganas is a motivational, but I think we could find the good in everything. And number one, hug and kiss your family. Tell them that you love them. Um, you know, be thankful for the opportunities that we have in this country. Um, you know, I love this country, born and raised here. 
And I'm blessed that, you know, we have the opportunities that we have. We have the protection that we have. We have the communities and neighborhoods that we have. And number one, you know, I think for me, it's to be appreciative. And then number two is what are you going to do about it? Right. Are you going to, are you going to let life just pass you by or are you going to create a, a special life? Are you going to do something with what you have and take Cre- action? Create a movement, you know, change, you know, put something together to help, you know, those people out there, but don't just post. I mean, that sucks. I just, I just can't stand. And it just became a trend, you know, now it's a trend. Like if you don't have it, it's kind of like, remember when the, the, the gay marriage thing happened and oh, everybody yeah. changed their profile, yeah. picked to support that. I'm like, right. <laughs> What does that say about you? Like nothing. Like you've done you're nothing. Just a, you're just a follower. <laughs> you're just a follower, a sheep. <laughs> you know, that's that's really it. Yeah. You're just a sheep. Like, you know, now and now France, you know, like I said, just donate some money, you know. Uh donate your time. Donate your time. Do something to help these people out. Don't just change your profile pic and think you're supporting France because you're not. Right. I mean, even if you could just go buy a homeless person a meal, help out your neighbors. A here. veteran. Yeah, you know, help out in your own local community. I'm sure that if you looked up in your own city, uh, shelters where there's uh, where they provide meals for families, especially around Thanksgiving time. Yeah. Um, you know, a lot of these families they don't have a lot of these sorry a lot of these homeless people don't have families. They don't have a warm house, uh, to to have a meal. You know, and in Southern California, it's it's finally starting to get a little bit cold at night. You know. Talking about that, uh, you know, the Toys for Tots is coming up. Um, so I was talking to a couple of the organiz- organizers of the event that we did on Saturday. These are all military. Uh, they all come from the military, all military background. Uh, we're going to Metro Fund Financial will be collecting toys for the Toys for Tots. And, uh, you know, if you want to help out, you know, feel free to reach out to us. Um, you can go to MetroFundFinancial.com and get our contact information if you live here in Orange County and you want to do something to to create some kind of change, you know, give a toy, you know, the toys for tots is a big thing. Um, I think it's huge, especially for military families and, uh, you know, not all kids get, get toys. Not all kids have access to that. So, I mean, that's one thing that we're going to do, you know, that's how we're going to do our part, especially for our soldiers, for, for our military, you know, for our veterans. Um, but like I said, do something about it. Don't just, don't don't talk about it be about it you right know? right and there's uh you know there's the harvest food banks so i mean i think a, a lot of major cities across the country are uh have a location with harvest food banks but you that's one way you can look it up i know there's a ton of local churches too that around this time they do a lot of uh thanksgiving meals that they give away to certain families so whatever it is just plug into something um you know i'm thankful that you know i have my wife and our baby on the way but you know there's a lot of people out there that don't have absolutely anything they don't have absolutely anyone so just give them your time you know and also uh just a a quick reminder to everybody out there um you know make sure that if you uh if you if you're gonna go ahead and 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 you know be loud about this on facebook that you're also putting some action behind it you know because the last thing I know Facebook is used to promote all the positive things that happen in your life or all the dramatic things that are going on in the world, but there's got to be some action behind it, you know, and and the reality is most of us who put positive stuff on there, you know, we all have, there's always a story behind what we post or there's always a story behind the only things we like to share with people on Facebook, you know, and, you know, as far as trying to make an effort to, to help, you know, and change the world, you know, show show your actions man by 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 posting pictures of you actually participating in the community you know like that'll tell me a lot more about your character than than you changing the the profile pic that's it guys that's it so we'll we'll leave you guys with this guys make it a great week i definitely want to thank all of of all of the people that have left the reviews on our itunes podcast we have yeah, yeah. quite a few uh, reviews now so thank you guys everybody we do appreciate it we also want to thank all of our uh, past guests for sitting with us and sharing their stories uh we recently were with alex uh, hernandez uh with antonio atoche uh rest in peace to his mother she just yes, passed away last week um, Sorry for your loss, buddy. Yes, and uh, we know we have Julio Garcia, Jesse Pulpo. Um, hopefully, I'm not forgetting anybody. But um, looking forward to uh, sharing many more stories with you guys soon. Make it a great week. And like Pablo said earlier, don't just talk about it. Be about it. Do it. Bang, bang, baby. Bang, bang, baby.